I wanted to take a look at two more examples of adding sine fractions. The first thing we should notice about this example is that the denominators are not the same, and that we know that if we want to add fractions, we have to obtain a common denominator, hopefully the least common denominator. So if you can look at the denominator of eight and 12 and realize that the LCD would be 24, that's great. We would then multiply this fraction by three over three and multiply this fraction by two over two. But I also want to show how you can determine the least common denominator using the prime factorization of the denominators. So let's rewrite these fractions, rewriting the original denominators in prime factored form. And we're also going to move these negative signs up into the numerator. So for this first fraction, we're going to write negative three all over the prime factorization of eight, which would be two times two times two plus write the second fraction as negative five all over the prime factorization of 12. Well, 12 is four times three, four is two times two. So this would be two times two times three. So again, if we're not able to determine the least common denominator is 24 by inspection, we just need to realize that in order to have a common denominator, the prime factors in the denominators must be the same. Notice how this fraction is missing a factor of three that the other fraction has. So we'd have to multiply this fraction by three over three. And notice how the second fraction is missing one factor of two that this denominator has. So in order for these denominators to be the same, we'd have to multiply this fraction by another factor of two on top and on bottom. So notice how now these fractions contain the same prime factors, and therefore we have the least common denominator, which in both cases is 24. Let's go ahead and rewrite this one more time. This is going to be negative nine all over 24, plus this will be negative 10 all over 24. So the numbers will now stay the same, and we add the numerators. So negative nine plus negative 10 is equal to negative 19. So this is our sum, but again, normally in most textbooks, you'll see the negative sign out in front of the fraction. So let's go ahead and write this as negative 19 24ths. These two fractions are equivalent, but this form is more common. Let's go ahead and take a look at a second example. Again, the first thing we should notice is we do have to obtain a common denominator. And again, if you can look at 20 and eight and realize that the least common denominator would be 40, we could quickly multiply this first fraction by two over two and multiply the second fraction by five over five. But again, I do want to show that if you can't determine the least common denominator by inspection, how you can use the prime factorization of the denominators to help. So let's go ahead and rewrite this with the denominators in prime factored form. And we'll also move the negative here up into the numerator. So we'll have negative three. The prime factorization of 20 would be four times five and four is two times two. So we'll have two times two times five plus one over the prime factorization of eight, which would be two times two times two. So now, if the prime factors of the denominators are the same, we'll have a common denominator. So now notice, in order for these prime factors to be the same, this denominator will need another factor of two, so multiply both the top and bottom by two, and notice how the second fraction is missing the prime factor of five. So we'll multiply the second fraction by five over five. Now if we rewrite this, we'll have negative six all over two times two times five times two, which would be 40, plus this would be five, again, all over 40. So now our denominators are the same. We can go ahead and add our fractions. The denominator stays the same, and then we combine the numerators. So negative six plus five is equal to negative one, but again, we'll go ahead and write this so the negative sign is out front of the fraction. And here's our sum. Now we'll take a look at two more examples of subtracting sine fractions. Our first example is negative five-sevenths minus negative one-fifth. So the first thing we should notice here is that we do not have a common denominator. So we want to determine the least common denominator if we have a denominator of seven and five. And when both denominators are prime numbers like we have here, the product of these two will be our least common denominator. And since seven times five is equal to 35, 35 will be our least common denominator. 
which means we'll have to multiply this first fraction by five in the denominator and five in the numerator. We'll have to multiply the second fraction by seven in the denominator and seven in the numerator. Now let's go ahead and rewrite this. And for this first fraction, we're gonna move the negative sign up into the numerator, so we'll have negative 25 all over 35. And having the negative in the numerator just makes it easier to keep track of. And then notice how we have minus a negative fraction, and that's equivalent to adding a positive fraction. So we'll write this as plus, this will be seven over 35. Now that we have a common denominator we can add, the denominator stays the same, and then we add the numerators. So negative 25 plus seven is equal to negative 18. And this fraction does not simplify, but normally you will see the negative sign back out in front of the fraction in most textbooks. So let's go ahead and write this as negative 18 35ths. Now let's take a look at a second example. Again, notice how we do not have a common denominator, and this one's gonna be a little bit more challenging. We need to determine the least common multiple of 18 and 12, which would also be the smallest number that is divisible by both 18 and 12. So in this example, what we'll do is look at the prime factorization of the denominators to help us determine what the least common denominator would be. And if we want, we can also write this as an addition problem. Subtracting 5 twelfths is the same as adding negative 5 twelfths. But that would be an optional step. And that would be an optional step, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna write this as negative one over the prime factorization of 18. Well, 18 is two times nine, and nine is three times three. And then I'll write this as plus negative five all over the prime factorization of 12, which would be two times two times three. Now looking at the prime factorization of the denominators, we can build the least common denominator by analyzing the prime factors. We need to make sure the denominators contain the exact same prime factors. And notice how this denominator has two factors of two and this one only has one. So this denominator needs another factor of two and we can multiply by two as long as we do the same in the numerator. And then looking at the second denominator, notice how it only contains one factor of three, but this contains two factors of three. So the second fraction needs another factor of three in the denominator and in the numerator. And now notice both denominators contain the same prime factors, which in both cases gives a product of 36, which is our least common denominator. Now let's go ahead and multiply these back together. We have negative two all over 36, Plus here we have negative 15 all over 36. So now we can add, the denominator stays the same, and then we combine the numerators. Negative two plus negative 15 is equal to negative 17. But again, you'll normally see this where the negative sign is out front of the fraction in most textbooks. So I think if you have a hard time determining what the least common denominator would be, looking at the prime factorization of the denominators is often very helpful.